The Kennedys love it and so will you. There's only one Cape Cod. On this edition of On the Map, we will be taking a look at the town of Hyannis here in the Cape, as well as looking into the rich history in the area by touring the JFK Museum in Hyannis, then looking at Heritage Museum and Gardens located in Sandwich. We begin by speaking with Jessica Silver, the CEO of the Hyannis Area Chamber of Commerce. We have uh, seven villages, Hyannis being one of them. We've got Barnstable, Osterville, Marston's Mills, Katua, West Barnstable, Centerville, and each of them have their own unique quaintness to them. So it's, if you come to Hyannis, you have to spend a couple of days here because each of those villages are amazing and they offer something different to everybody. Our Hyannis Main Street, it's got 43 different types of restaurants. It, it caters to every different type of person and different cuisine, it's fantastic. Um, we've got the islands that are off of the Cape. Not that I want to detract from Hyannis, but it's also something great to see if you have some time. We have Provincetown, which is another great destination here on the Cape. We've got all different things that that make us make us unique, and that's why why people keep coming back here every year. What kind of events do you have here? Oh my goodness, um, what we don't have. <laughs> Uh, we have a Father's Day car show where we shut down our Hyannis Main Street and get 400 antique cars lined up on, on this actual street. We get about 80,000 spectators just to visit that at one event. We have, um, there's so many, there's a Pops by the Sea which we use the Hyannis Village Green. We get about 15,000 people at that. We bring in a big name to do the guest conducting. Um, we also started last year the Vintage Motorcycle Show down in Barnstable Village, so we shut down a portion of 6A, Historic 6A, and we, we line it with vintage motorcycles. It's so, so very cool and so different. Um, and those are just a few of the events. You know, we have a harbor lighting in December where we get the boats, do a boat parade, and we have Main Street Hyannis all decorated for Christmas, and it's great. We also do more local things where we have a shop local day both in uh, May and in October where we try to get all our residents and visitors to shop in these local shops and spend their money there. So we go from small to very large. <laughs> we are standing on this beautiful boardwalk in Hyannis that hosts our Hyannis artist shanties that have many different types of artists that do great work here. You can actually walk into these beautiful little buildings and speak to the artists directly, watch them work or purchase one of their pieces of art. Not only do we have this here where you can shop local, we also have the Cape Cod Mall which is, which is located on the other side of town which has great shopping available as well as wonderful restaurants. I would have to say there's um, two major things, and again, that's the beaches and the Kennedy name. We've got a lot of people that come that are interested in learning more about the Kennedys and wanting to visit those beautiful beaches that we have in the Cape Cod National Seashore, which is down towards Truro. It's just amazing, it's something you don't see every day, and especially here on Cape Cod and on this, on this coast. No vacation to the Cape is complete without some Kennedy family history. Lucky for us, here on the Hyannis Main Street is the presidential-looking JFK Museum. Here we get an expert tour on the life of the Kennedy family. Well, the John F. Kennedy Hyannis Museum uh, is a site that focuses on the history and the legacy of President Kennedy and his family and the overall Kennedy family uh, in general from the lens of Cape Cod. Uh, we have been here for 23 years. We're an important part of the downtown Hyannis, which is very vibrant with restaurants and shopping. But we have, as you will see coming in, a presidential site uh, feel. And our focus here is to give you a sense of how they lived. In many ways, Cape Cod was the home of the family, remains the home of the family today. They spend their summers here. They spend time out in the ocean, which is a point of President Kennedy's real love. And more importantly, you can see from the videos and the images that they lived as local people here. They really enjoyed being able to come here and relax and just enjoy time together as a family, boating out or racing out on the water with the sailing, or more importantly, just having great family times together. So when we start the museum, we really start from a historical look of the president 
himself and what would be called the family uh, compound. You hear the word compound, and when you look at the exhibits, and we have over on this wall here, the beginning of some of the photography we have, which show the main house. This would be the main house, which everyone would say is the compound. That was the home of Joe and Rose Kennedy, and they moved here in 1926. And when you talk of the compound, you're really talking of a neighborhood in Hyannisport, Massachusetts, which is right along the ocean. And <clears throat> this is um, the compound itself for the main house. This will be Bobby Kennedy's home. <clears throat> and this is President Kennedy's home here. So together, the three of those would be called the compound of the Kennedy estate. But when you look at it, it's a neighborhood. And when you want to come and see it as a tourist, you really have to see it from the water. And there are harbor tours that uh, take care of that. You get a chance to drive the streets and see how they look as a neighborhood. But for the most part, it's, uh, it's family. <clears throat> it's time that they would come home and happy times and sad times and still do today. So if we go around the, the room that I'm in right now, this is a kind of an iconic photo of young President Kennedy. Uh, on the water, you'll see images of the family. These are back in the, when they were all young. There were nine children in uh, Rose and Joe Kennedy's family. The three brothers, uh, Jack, Bobby, and Ted, always formed uh, and forged great friendships uh, throughout their lives, and, and they'll play out in the rest of the museum. You know, President Kennedy and the Kennedy family really loved sailing, and this is a model of his boat called Victura. It was given to him by his dad when he was 15 years old. He taught all of his brothers and sisters how to sail. And today, if you come on the Cape in the summertime, you'll find that there are boats out there sailing that are part of the Kennedy family today. Uh, they did it. If you see the images, we call this the Ocean Room. The images show the family time out in the water. There's the president in this, this one image here with his family and some guests. You know, an important part of, important part of this museum is certainly capturing uh, uh, Jackie Kennedy, uh, who is some, uh, someone that is admired by women uh, and men across the world. We have this from an exhibit of, uh, of about five years ago, and it captures some of her images. She was. She was very young, uh, she was vibrant. Senator Ted Kennedy was involved with this museum from the very beginning and this is just a short collection of images that we have that captures his time uh, and his life uh, here and his family. He was very involved with the Cape community uh, as a, just as a, as a citizen. He was out and about, he sailed, you'd see him at church, you'd see him with his family. And uh, in his later life, he was revered as the, the Lion of Congress. Uh, people around the world knew what he brought to the ability of a, of a Congress that could work together, and he was full of life. This uh, year, we opened a new exhibit called Jack and Bobby Brothers First, and every year we do a signature exhibit. What's unique about this is it captures in images and text, the relationship of, of two brothers. The image you're looking at right here is an iconic photo of Bobby and uh, President during some uh, very uh, crucial time. And, and the interesting now is you, you start panning, we're beginning to look at the brothers as young men, both uh, very, uh, there, was three year, there were eight years difference between the two. And uh, you begin to build this uh, very uh, interesting and in many ways touching story of two brothers. You know, here are pictures of Ambassador uh, Kennedy with his uh, sons and, uh, and gathering times together with the whole family. They were, they were great family gathering photos that you see regularly throughout. One of the high points of our exhibit is this family tree of the Kennedy family, which shows the three generations after Joe and Rose Kennedy. 
and it shows the, certainly the richness of Kennedys uh, that have come into the world and, uh, and many of whom are committed to public work. Many are names that people will recognize and um, it also highlights through the listing the sad times of the Kennedy family that they're certainly uh, not uh, um, well known for but everyone knows that there's, they've had their share of tragic events. On the other hand, you know, the commitment of the family to public service remains as rich today as it was then. You know, as we bring uh, this uh, tour to an end, we really end at this exhibit image of the two brothers sitting on the porch at the parents' home uh, and talking to each other and our brothers. They're enjoying time together and it captures what is really throughout this museum, that these are individuals who loved Cape Cod, who had times here that really brought their lives together and also individually where they came and found solace and fun. And over on the, the legend that's right to the right of this uh, image shows that this legacy is very much alive today. And we talk about certainly uh, the, the whole issue of, of the president and his brother, but also the legacy. And if you come to the Cape, you come to the National Seashore, which is a world treasure of the preserved uh, seashore of Cape Cod. On the, uh, on the Outer Banks. We talk about some of the other well-known uh, members of the family, including Eunice in her Special Olympics that's being carried on by her sons. Ted Kennedy that we mentioned earlier, and showed you the images, and, and of course, his son Patrick who served. And we end today by looking at Caroline Kennedy who is ambassador to Japan. We have uh, Ted Kennedy's son, Teddy Jr., who's a state senator in Connecticut. And then the last is uh, Joe Kennedy III, who is a congressman uh, from outside of Boston. All of them are carrying on the legacy of what their father, fathers and grandfather and grandmother set of what their responsibilities were to be part of helping the world be a better place. After learning all about the Kennedy family legacy, we traveled down the main street of Hyannis and out to the JFK Memorial, admiring the scenery for a bit before moving on to meet Julie at Heritage Museums and Gardens for a one-of-a-kind tour. Heritage Museums and Gardens is a hundred acres of fun and surprises. We have beautiful uh, landscaped gardens. We have three museum buildings that house our permanent collection of American history objects. And we bring in special exhibits every year as well. This year we're featuring three generations of the work of the Wyeth family. So we opened in June of 1969. J.K. Lilly III uh, had visited the Cape uh, his whole life. He was from Indiana. And he bought this property and he knew he wanted to showcase American art and ingenuity and American automobiles. So he started collecting in the early 60s with the cars, which we will start with. And so he built this building. It's a replica of the Shaker Round Barn, which is in uh, Hancock, Massachusetts. So we have a collection here that's called Driven to Collect. And we have about 23 of our cars on display. They're all American made. And then we also have a collector's corner, which we have David Geisinger, who's an eBay executive. He has loaned us three of his cars to be on display this season only. So next year we'll have a different collector. So as you can see, this is Driven to Collect. It's divided into different sections. The first one being, why do we collect? And it kind of talks about what makes people want to collect an object and also what makes these particular cars valuable to a collector. What makes this auto museum unique too is that all of these cars have been pristinely restored whereas a lot of other auto museums they just might have the cars and so they're not necessarily in prime condition but these have all been restored some have had to you know be repainted or you know new parts you know but modeled after what it was uh, we have a very hard-working and dedicated auto committee that spends a lot of hours working on these cars and keeping them up and running. Most of the cars do start and can run and they have certain days where they come to Heritage and they do auto exercise days and they choose a couple different cars and they'll take them for drives around the gardens. 
to keep them up and running. So with each of the cars, we have a little sign that talks about the history of the car and then its technical stats, like the horsepower, how much it costs back when it was made, and some other milestones that happened the year that it was manufactured. And one of the other fun facts I think about these is that each sign tells you what was the price of gas back when this car was manufactured. So I think that's an interesting historical point in today's world of uh, gas prices. Just look at this place. It must take a lot of work to keep these vehicles in such pristine condition. I'd really like to take one for a drive along the Cape. So this car, the 1927 LaSalle Sport Phaeton, is an interesting one because only 10 of them were made with this body style and it's believed that this might be the only one that survived. So that's a very rare car uh, that we have here, which is, uh, makes it more exciting and would make it more valuable for a collector. Um, this green car, the 1909 white steam car, was actually part of President Taft's White House fleet. He actually, we have a photo of him in this car. It has the presidential seal on it. So this was a very important car because he was one of the first presidents to have a fleet of automobiles and we have one of his. And as we we're talking about collecting and defining a collection that you might have, this section here is kind of cars that are valuable because of who they were once owned by. And right next to President Taft's steam car, we have a 1931 Duesenberg Model J Durham Tourster that was owned by Academy Award-winning actor Gary Cooper back in the 30s. So this is another one that has great historical significance as far as American film goes. So something new with this year's Driven to Collect is this collector's corner, which is a little bit of a triangle right here. We have three cars on loan from David Geisinger, who is uh, local to Massachusetts uh, from Plymouth, and he has loaned us three of his personal cars for the season to display. The first one being a 1966 Volvo P1800. He has a one-of-a-kind 1955 Porsche Spider. It was actually a designer car built in 2009 that's a replica of the 55 Porsche Spider. Um, very sleek car that a lot of people love. And then his final car is a 1983 Land Rover Series 3 Stage 1. And it's interesting because we're asking these collectors to showcase their cars and why they started collecting and why they're important to them. And for example, the Land Rover was something he'd been on a safari when he was a teenager. And so this was a car that reminded him of that and brought him back to that memory. And that's what interested him and why he purchased that car. And I think one other thing to point out is a lot of people and a lot of children come into this museum and as you can tell these cars are in beautiful condition and so it's so hard because you want to touch them and you want to sit in them. And so we have over here a 1913 Ford Model T that kids and families can actually sit in. So they can sit behind the wheel of one of these old cars and see what it might have felt like to to drive or be a passenger in one of them and so we keep this one here for people especially to to climb in and enjoy every time you come to heritage you're going to see something different our permanent collection changes every year we bring on different historic objects so every time you come you'll see something different we rearrange our cars and bring in some of our cars and take away others so that that's constantly changing. We work with car collectors in our collector's corner so every year you're going to see some cars from a private collection that you wouldn't have a chance to see ordinarily. And every year we bring in a special exhibit uh, that really delves into one aspect of American culture and they change every year. Now outside in the gardens the seasons change so every time you come you're going to see something nuanced and something a little bit different blooming. So this exhibit is our special exhibit of 2015, it opened June 6th. It will be open through September 27th. It's a unique, one-of-a-kind exhibit in that it was put together just to be displayed at Heritage. You will not find this anywhere else. But we have artwork from all the three generations of the Wyeth family. We have N.C. Wyeth, his son Andrew Wyeth, and Andrew's son Jamie all on display here. And this exhibit opened, we actually had Jamie Wyeth came to the exhibit at opening, and then also um, Victoria Wyeth, who is 
I guess right, I think Andrew's granddaughter and Jamie's niece. They both came for the opening of the exhibit and then the first day that it was open to the public, Victoria did four tours that day to, for the public. But as long as they, it was a free tour with admission and she brought them all around this exhibit and talked about her experience. She's a Wyeth, you know, she grew up in the family and so it was a great opportunity um, for people to learn, get a real insider feel to all this. So we were really honored that uh, we had both of them here. Uh, so these are NC's paintings from poems of American patriotism. They all accompanied a certain poem and he painted an image to go with all of them. One of the most famous being the image of Paul Revere that we have. So what we also have for our visitors to the exhibit to really take in this art is we've set up kind of a, our own little library area. And so this is an area people can just sit and relax, they can flip through these books, they can you know, spend however long they want reading these, learning more about the Wyeths, seeing more of their artwork. So now this is when we get into Jamie Wyeth's work. He did a lot of work with seagulls and birds, so we have some of his uh, work here. And then this is the final part of the exhibit. It's a work by each of the three Wyeths, um, something to do with birds, something that ties them all together. So we have NC with the eagle, we have Jamie with another gull, and then uh, Andrew Wyeth with crows. So when it comes to heritage, another thing that I think people are surprised by is how we really have stuff here for all ages. I mean, art can appeal to any age, but then when it comes to the different generations, I'm gonna bring you down to Hidden Hollow, which opened uh, almost five years ago. And it is a certified nature outdoor explorer classroom. And it has different play stations that are also learning stations for kids. It's almost like you don't know you're learning, um, but it's an area for kids probably through the age of like maybe seven, eight, nine is about how old it skews to. Um, and that's where the adventure park comes in that we'll get to later is that's for once kids outgrow Hidden Hollow, we have the adventure park now. But Hidden Hollow is this beautiful space and its iconic emblem is this treehouse that was designed by, I believe it's Pete Nelson from the show Treehouse Masters. He actually designed the treehouse for us. We're actually getting ready. Um, the first weekend of August, we'll have the fifth birthday party for Hidden Hollow. So they have a little outdoor stage here that kids, they have costumes kids can play with, but then they'll do like special shows there um, for the birthday party. They'll have a performer come and, and do something uh, to celebrate. Here. Another way to learn science when you don't really know that you're learning science is here in our adventure park. Um, it's got wonderful five trails from very easy to very difficult. But what you're doing is learning about forest ecology. You look all around you and you see the different kinds of trees. You begin to learn about how uh, we can interface with the natural environment without harming the natural environment. And there's a little bit of physics too. If you're trying to uh, get your, your harness to break along a zip line, that's all about friction and we teach you a little bit about that too. So it's a wonderful way to learn, have fun, and be with your family and friends. And the last building that we're coming up to is our American Art and Carousel building. It has what could arguably be the most popular feature here. We have a working 1908 Charles Loof carousel. He's a famous carousel designer. He's done them, I know, all, at least all over the country. Like he did the one at the Santa Monica Pier. That's another huge one that he did, but we have one. It's still in operation. It's uh, what, 107 years old now and unlimited rides with admission. So it's something that the kids all kind of run and gravitate towards. Heritage owns over 12,000 items of American art, history, artifacts. And so this year we've renovated that space and we've created the Heritage Collection, which showcases a portion of those items into four different areas, which is sense of place, sense of home, sense of work and conflict of ideas. And it's to look at these objects and to look at how they were made and where they come from and to see how significant they are to American history and why they're important to us. So um, it has in there, we have a, a big collection of military miniatures, which people, that's another item that people really wanna see. They just love them. They used to be on display um, years ago in the Special Exhibitions Gallery and then they kind of went away while other things were out and people always asked for them, so they are back. 
So this is a pretty cool item that this was made somewhere between 1650 and 1700. So incredibly old uh, basket that has somehow, you know, it survived. There's only a few left and we have one of them. This would be one of the most historically significant. This is a wine can that was crafted by Paul Revere. So then we're going into the conflict of ideas section, which kind of explores America's history with war and guns. And so it's could be, you know, people could view it as controversial, but we do have our military miniatures that people are very fond of. The, I'd say the biggest item here is this one. It's a rifle that was owned by Buffalo Bill. So another one that he's another figure of American history that people really know and have heard stories about. And so we actually have one of his rifles. And then finally we have the tobacco store figures that were huge in American history in shops in the 1800s uh, and early 1900s. So these are all hand carved and um, these are four examples of what could have been outside of different stores. Heritage is a great place for the entire family to spend a day while they're visiting Cape Cod. It's great in all weather uh, because we have inside and outside features. So not everybody can be at the beach every single day. So it's a great place to take a break from the beach, to come with your family and multiple generations in your family because there really is something for everyone. And each member of the family learns from each other. The little ones love Hidden Hollow, which is our two acre outdoor nature classroom. Uh, parents and grandparents might really love our history collections, our automobile collections. Everyone loves a ride on our carousel and everybody likes a walk in the woods. The more athletic older children love the adventure park. So it's really something that when a family gets together for the summer on vacation or uh, just some away time that they can spend a really interesting, productive and fun day. On the next episode of On the Map, we visit P-Town, a whole different world inside the lens of Cape Cod. Then we take a ride out on the untouched landscape of the dunes here on the Cape. If you enjoyed this show, check out previous episodes and more on our YouTube channel. You can also like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at On the Map TV to get pics and updates as we are out on the road.